Welcome to the Healing Place podcast, a space filled with inspirational stories of hope, along with practical advice for your healing journey. Your host is Terry Welbrock, trauma warrior, writer, speaker, blogger, therapy dog handler, and founder of the Sammy's Bundles of Hope Project. As a survivor and a thriver, Terry's mission is to shine the light of hope into the world by interviewing insightful guests from across the globe. Please stay tuned at the end of today's interview as we honor our sponsors. The Healing Place podcast is a fiscally sponsored project of Fractured Atlas. Now, here's your host and trauma warrior, Terry Welbrock. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Healing Place Podcast. I'm your host, Terry Welbrock, and very excited to have with me today, Karen Hill, who is here to talk to us about some PTSD and, um, yeah, her role in helping others overcome their PTSD symptoms. So welcome, Karen. Thank you, Terry. It's nice to be here. Yeah, nice to meet you. I think Stephanie McPhail had introduced us. Yeah. Yes, and I love Stephanie and the work she's doing. Um, Amazing, uh, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty cool. So do you want to, um, yeah, tell people about what it is you do? Okay. Uh, What I do is I help people that are stuck in that emotional trap, basically, of where they are with PTSD. If they've had a, a, a trauma in their life or a traumatic incident in their life, a lot of times one out of four people will end up with post traumatic stress if they've been through a traumatic incident. So not everybody gets it you know and so if you're one of the four that does a lot of times you don't know how to get out of it or how to that it's even possible because we've been living with this stigma for 40 years that once you have post-traumatic stress syndrome and have these symptoms that they're here forever and my story starts when um, I found out that there is a way out and I didn't know that you know that was my my journey started seven years ago when um, my life was totally different and uh, I was happily married to my husband. We'd been married for 34 years and one night I was out of town and he was tragically killed. He was actually murdered. Oh my God. Talk about turning your life upside down. And at the time um, I didn't even know what PTSD was. And when I was diagnosed with it, when I finally went in, because I knew something was wrong with me and I couldn't, I couldn't get out of this feeling and all these symptoms and it PTSD manifests a little different for everybody. And even though we have a lot of the same and similar symptoms and mine was, uh, it manifested as a very rapid heartbeat being stuck in that fight or flight. And so I was, you know, having that fear and wanting to run all the time. And so, you know, when my resting heart rate was, I think, around 150, 160, and then it would go up to 200. Oh, my and goodness. Yeah. And then that way. So, so I thought at the time, again, not knowing what PTSD was, I thought it was something only combat veterans had. Um and so when they diagnosed me with PTSD and they said that, you know, take the antidepressants and the SSRIs and all these type of things, um, but we can't really do anything for you until it gets bad enough to where you either are going to have a stroke or going to AFib. And this is what they told me. I mean, I love medical doctors, but they don't really deal with the mind and the brain, you know, and this is where my PTSD was. It was stuck in my mind, stuck in my brain and sent me home and and really i at that point went into total despair um because if they couldn't help me the doctors couldn't help me what am i going to do and the medications for me personally made things so much worse so i couldn't do that either and i i knew that something bad was going to happen i think we're all in tune with our bodies enough to where when you can't control it and there comes a point where instinctively you know that something bad is going to happen pretty soon and so i hit that point but at that point I actually got lucky and remembered that I knew NLP, something called the NLP, the neuro linguistics programming, which has to do with reprogramming your mind, you know, the pictures in your mind and your subconscious and all that where my PTSD was stuck. So I remembered it, did a process, was able to free myself out of the PTSD and calm my nervous system back down. My heart rate went back to normal. 
And it was from that moment on, seven years ago, that I have been studying everything I could get my hands on about the mind and the brain and, and what happened. How could I do this and, and cure this, fix this, balance myself again when all these wonderful doctors in their white coats and the, and the therapists and the, the psychologists and everything couldn't do it, you know, and they actually admitted to me that they couldn't do it because it was stuck in my head. Yeah. And so by learning that and experiencing that, that myself, I needed to know what in the hell happened. You know, how did this happen? And so that's where I have delved into all of the science behind it, the neuroscience, the epigenetics, the quantum physics, all of that that I can study as far as with the brain and, and post-traumatic stress and what's really going on and how to really get out of it. Um, that's where my journey actually began. And so it's in knowing that, 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 my whole goal is to be able to reach people that maybe either are in PTSD or have had a traumatic experience and are stuck in it, or that maybe something is, you know, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Maybe there's going to be something in your life. And if you hear this, you know, it, I didn't have the knowledge beforehand. And so I didn't know that it was even available. I, I kept looking for somebody to to show me the manual, how to do this, how do you get out of this? And nobody had it. And so it's like, I feel like I've really discovered the steps in the manual to be able to help others out of it. And sometimes, like I said, I got lucky that I remembered that I knew something that that was in the back of my mind and that I could help myself. But a lot of times it's just in hearing the information that maybe you don't need it today, but you might need it in 10 years from now and just being able to remember that you heard it that there is a way out of this, that maybe the doctors, if they don't know it, um, you can help yourself or there is another option. And so that really, it's been my whole journey to be able to share with what I've learned and how the mind works, how the brain works with not just traumatic incidences that lead us into uh, some people into PTSD, but in, in your life in general, you know, how to deal with your subconscious, which actually rules your whole life. You know, it's, 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 it's so big compared to our conscious thinking brain. So it's, it's in that information. That's really how I found out about what I do and, and how the brain works and how to help people get out of PTSD because it's horrible. And, and there's people, I work with people around the world and it's a global epidemic in itself. It's, it, there's so much suffering associated with it and loss of hope and, you know, horrible symptoms that people get stuck in not knowing that there is a way out. Yeah. I, and, and I say amen to all of it because one, I'm a trauma geek and I too did the same thing along my healing journey, which also started in 2013 of reading everything I could get my hands on about brain plasticity and um, it, it, I mean now polyvagal theory and um, just I mean there's just so much amazing ACEs science the adverse oh, childhood yeah. experiences and and also but also those um, I used to say alternative but one of my podcast guests said complimentary and I love that word um, looking at how meditation and mindfulness and Ho'oponopono Hawaiian healing and EFT tapping and all of these things can be utilized to, yes, change those neuron pathways in the brain. And um, I love, I love that you are going to talk about another one of those avenues today. Um, yeah. And it's, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's and that's very, where I became the geek in, in wanting to know the, the science behind it because you know, a lot of people associate this with woo-woo and hippie shit and things like that. Right, right. You know, and so it's like, but it's not. You know, it fascinates me that it's it's science based and it's energy based and it's all the things that we sh all should know. We all should have this manual and come with a manual of how to work our minds and our brains and things like that. And it's not a secret yet. Nobody tells us because right. there's. I mean, it gets into all sorts of things, you know, control issues, you know, the people that know could have a lot more control over the people that don't know. And so it's not to their benefit that you know, but you know, that's why you can heal yourself. You don't need medications for so many things, you know, that, and it's all associated how your mind, it will end up making you sick. You know, the mind body connection, you can't separate the two. And so it, when you're sick, there's a reason and it's usually in your mind and you change your mind and your thoughts and you can change your body. So it's, it's fascinating to me and it's so helpful. But again, this is information I didn't know seven years ago, like you, you know, it's like not until I actually went through the experience and was on both sides of it 
and and really was awakened to the fact that how it works it, yes. it just and it fascinates me to yeah. but I, I my my whole thing is I wish everybody knew this I you know this is things these are things that I, I be, truly believe that children should be taught we should be taught by the time we're 12 years old of, of how to operate our minds how to operate our ourself Yes, for sure. And I mean, I, I think when you start talking about this, I think Louise Hay was a big, one of the first proponents of you can heal your life and just um, the, even the utilization of positive affirmations. And I know I myself, I experienced severe panic attacks for 25 years after uh, a murder in my life in 1988. And so for the next 25 years, I I, I, I thought I was broken. You said that very early on in this conversation. And I just remember thinking, well, I'm just forever broken. I'm ever stuck like this, you know, right. having to figure out how to get through a day without having a panic attack, or at least not a really super severe one. And then once I stumbled upon um, EMDR, which is what I utilized along with, but I also stopped taking all medications. I didn't want to be on the antidepressants and the anti-anxiety meds and all of those things that were being thrown at this because it wasn't, it was masking an underlying cause. Right. I mean, yes, it was helping me cope and I'm not anti-medicine, but I'm just saying that I needed to get to the root of the problem, which was resolving unresolved trauma. Yeah. 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 And that's, there's an analogy that I love. It's almost like you've stepped on a tack and you go to the doctor and he gives you the aspirin and the painkillers and all the things to, to cover up the symptoms and cover up the pain. And if he'd only just pull out the flip and tack, you know, everything would be go gone. And it's that easy. And, and the shift happens that much. But could you imagine, Terry, had you known, because we don't know what we don't know, isn't that right. the same or something yeah. like that? Had you known back then that there was a way that you could have just changed that fear in the image in your mind and what was going on and causing the fear, which was causing the emotion, which was flooding your body with the hormones. I mean, it's, it's really, it's, it's not rocket science, really, when you, you, you learn how it works. Um, had you known that all the, the suffering that you wouldn't have had to have dealt with at the time. And so it's... I, again, it, I, I, it's, this is the information that we have that we're doing in the work that we do, that sharing this information is going to change somebody's life. And, you know, and uh, I, I'm just lucky I knew it, and now you know it, and so you can pass it on, yeah. Right. So now you coach people. Do you work with people one-on-one? -on -one? Do you do webinars? How do you engage with people through this healing process? Right now, what I'm doing is, and I have been, um, because I work on, on pretty much a global level uh, through Zoom like this. And so we can have our sessions. I don't need to be sitting with somebody. In fact, I don't even need to know what their trauma was, which is very comforting to a lot of people that oh, they yeah. don't have to go back into it. As long as you know what it is, I don't need to, I know, need to know very little, actually, because I doing neuro-linguistics programming, I am literally a guide, you know, same with hypnosis. I'm guiding you. You're the one that you're, you're not broken, but you're the one that needs to go in and change the programming. It's almost like there's a picture playing in your mind and it's in the subconscious. That's why you don't know where it is or what it is because you're not aware of it. It's in the subconscious that if you can go in and edit that movie of what's playing in your subconscious mind, and the way it's making you feel, which is causing that emotion, which floods your body with either, you know, positive emotions or negative emotions and the mind body connection there again, that you can heal yourself. You can, you won't forget what happened. You know, you'll never forget the, the trauma, but you or what the traumatic incident, but you'll um, be able to get rid of that emotional hold that it has on you. And that, you know, it, it becomes a memory like any other memory that you can pull up if you want to and put away. We all have lots of memories, good and bad, and we can pull them up if we want to and then put them back away. With the, the post-traumatic stress and the PTSD, that memory never finished getting processed through the mind. So it becomes a memory that you can pull up and put away. It's playing as if it's still happening now. Yeah. And it doesn't matter if it happened, you know, 25 years earlier. It's still there because it's that basic survival instinct that, are, that we're born with in, in our minds. And, our, and once we understand that there is, our mind is doing exactly what it was intended for, it's keeping us alive. Right. And all it cares about, you know, the trauma is stuck in a part of your mind that's going, 
if you're breathing, Terry, we're doing our job and we don't care if you're happy or successful or, you know, we don't care what else is going on. As long as you're breathing, we're good. And so until it actually finishes processing and gets into the, the whole brain because it's stuck in that one part of the brain and finishes process, the regular processing like a normal memory does, again, you can pull it up and, and when you want to and put it away when you want to. And which it, you, so you never forget it. And it's interesting, a lot of the, the clients that I work with, there is a big misconception and a stigma about that they don't want to get rid of their story because of the longer that they have, the, whatever happened to them becomes their identity, you know, and the more they talk about it becomes their identity, good or bad, you know. So um, if there's, if they, they feel like if they get rid of the PTSD and they heal or cure from it, um, that they, their story will have been lost. And there's that saying, corpus delecta, you might have heard a Latin saying, it's like, it's one of those, when there is no body, there is no crime type thing. And so they feel that if they get rid of the, the story, they don't keep the story alive, then the bad thing never happened to them, you know, and it loses that validity. And once it becomes somebody's identity, we fight to the death for our identities and we don't want to give them right. up. And so it's very interesting to, to be able to help people and to let them know that they're, that will always be their story and their memory, but it won't have that emotional hold, which is causing the nightmares and the, you know, the flashbacks and all of the physical symptoms that come with having PTSD will. And, and the interesting thing, Terry, too, is the symptoms will stay with you your whole life unless you finish processing it. Correct. You know, and, and so it becomes a choice. Do you want to live this way, which is a horrible way because the, you know, the biggest thing people tell me or they, they ask me that, or when we're talking, they say, I just want to feel, feel normal again, because that's the thing is you, you're stuck in this. And that was personally myself. I just wanted my body back. I wanted to feel normal again, you know, and I, nobody could help me. Nobody could tell me because it was in my head and I had to change it. But I didn't know that there was someone like us that could guide you through that process. And, and it's so interesting to me because when you do the process, it takes about an hour generally, um, there's a shift. And it's a shift that is a very subtle shift. You're expecting, especially if you've had post-traumatic stress and had these symptoms for a long time, you're expecting something big, you know, to a big revelation or something. And it's, it's that subtle shift. It's like almost like you've stubbed you, when you've stubbed your toe and it hurts and, and you just can't get your mind off it because it, you know, that's all you can think about because it hurts so bad. And then about an hour later, all of a sudden you realize that it stopped and, and you can't even hardly remember, you remember that it hurt, but you don't exactly remember what, how bad it hurt or anything like right. that. It just stops, you know, because once the pain is gone, it's just gone. And so that's what it's like with the, this pain in, in this traumatic stress is it's just gone. And it's just, it, most everybody just goes, they just stop and they go, whoa, you know, it's, it's just that subtle shift that, that it's the oddest thing that you're, like I say, you're expecting something big. And it's so rewarding to me when people have that shift because it changes their whole life. I mean, they, it gives them back their life. Yes, absolutely. And I, I was the same way. I didn't really realize it was happening until some, at some point in one of our sessions, my therapist said during EMDR, this was, and we did, we did some changing of pictures, things. We, she brought in a lot of yeah, that's uh, NLP. Yeah. Yes. And, um, but she said, Terry, when was your last panic attack? And I kind of sat back and I thought, Oh my gosh, four months ago. And, like I didn't even realize I wasn't having them. <laughs> like it was, it was just it had just started it's to just gone. happen. It, yeah. yeah, and that's that's the thing with any pain that we have. You know, when it's gone, we don't think about it. You know, it, it's just gone. When the headache's gone, you know, you don't think about it anymore. <laughs> so it's the it's the same thing that happens. Yeah. yeah, beautiful. I love it. All right. Just taking a moment to thank a sponsor to the Healing Place podcast fiscally sponsored project through Fractured Atlas and for their generous donation this week at the Trauma Warrior level, the Phoenix Fund via Blue Mountain Community Foundation. Thank you. Now back to the show. All right. So, um, yes, any myths or facts that you want to clarify for people regarding trauma yeah. or the process that you do? 
Right. The, the biggest myth, I think, is the stigma, like I, I mentioned before, that it can't be healed. It can't be cured. And once you have it, you have it forever. And and that that's so sad and disheartening to me because I will talk with, in fact, I, not long ago, I talked with a man who, um, he was a firefighter during 911. And he's stuck still in that horrible, the horrible symptoms of post-traumatic stress. And he said, he he thanked me very much for wanting to help him, but he said, um, I, you can't get rid of this, you know? And so there is that stigma. And again, it's that thing like Henry Ford, believe you can or believe you can't, either way you're right, you know? So right. if you believe it, that you've been told that once you have PTSD, you'll have it forever and there's nothing that can help unless you do, you know, the drugs or the self-medicating or any of that type of thing, that... Um, that you will have it forever. And that's not true, you know? And, and I think what helped me was I didn't have a preconceived idea of what PTSD was. And I didn't even know that before I found all this out. So it's one of the biggest things and the biggest barriers and the biggest blocks that I find that people have with even wanting the help is they don't feel that they can be helped. And if they, they don't think that they can be helped, there's nothing I can do or, or you can do. It's, you have to be able to believe that, um, yeah. Yeah, you have so that, to, that is, you have that to is, be willing. Yeah, that's the biggest myth there, yeah. is, is really. And, and again, the media kind of almost plays into that, you know, anytime you see things on, on shows and stuff. And, they, and again, people will go into talk therapy for years and years and years. And so, yes, they, they keep going over what happened and why it happened and all that type of thing. But why not just get rid of it and be done with it? You know? Yeah. I mean, I, I agree because in, in my four years, it took me four years of EMDR therapy, but that was, I had been to a talk therapist prior to that and it really helped me in the beginning, but right. she was the one, and I just love her to death for this, that said, you know, I think we've kind of done all we can here. Why don't you consider EMDR? And I had never heard of it and ended up you know, moving to another therapist then who specialized in that. And yes, it was there that the true healing and processing began. And yeah. like you said, changing, changing the picture. Um, well, it, it, it shifted everything. It was right. Life, and life you probably know why EMDR works because you're, it's, you're putting yourself in that whole brain state. Again, the trauma is stuck in one side of the brain. And so EMDR gets it balanced out into the whole brain state, you know, instead of just being stuck playing over and over and over right. and over. Once you get it into the whole brain, you, I mean, everybody knows the left brain, right brain, but it's the whole brain that actually it needs to be in to, to process it. Right. Well, and I love it because what, what you're talking about, at least if, if I'm understanding correctly, during some of our sessions, she would say, you know, because we were returning to these violent scenes, I was involved in two bank robberies and both were had violent crimes committed within the robbery themselves. And um, she, she would say, how do you want to see this different this time? Yeah. And so... I would create a different ending than what had happened um, yeah. and how it worked better for me. Um, and it truly started to create shifts. Yeah. yeah. And, and you probably understand too, the reason why that works is because when it's in your subconscious, the subconscious doesn't speak English. It doesn't speak the language. It speaks through your senses. And so when she's having you, go back in and how do you want to see it? You know, there it is. You're, you're visualizing through your sight. So you're changing, you're editing the movie. And all it is, is by editing the movie, it releases that, that emotional hold. And so it's like, because it's very similar. I don't, I, I do DMDR, but I find it even more effective with the neuro linguistics program because it's faster. The, um, the, to be able to shift, you know, change the picture or rewind the movie um, and see it differently or play it backwards, play it in black and white, change any of the submodalities about it. It changes the way your brain remembers it and it doesn't, and it's not fearful and it's not scary. It's, it's, it's in change. It's using the senses. And that's exactly what she's doing with the MDR is, is she's having, when she has you go back in and she's, you're re-editing the movie and that's, Unfortunately, it's as simple as it is, you know, and people don't want to hear that it's simple because it, it is so 
it's so hard and tragic, you know, and especially if you've ever suffered with it, um, you know what it does to you. I mean, it, it ruins your whole life. It holds you in, in, in just oh, yeah. such a horrible place. Physically, emotionally, I mean, relationships, everything. It affects your whole life. And to have it be that simple, that easy to be able to edit the picture and change the whole thing as far as that, again, that emotional hold that it has on you and your body and your, in your life as quickly as you can, as it is really possible. Why doesn't everybody know this stuff? You know, that, that's right. the part that made me mad when I found it all out. It's like, I kept thinking, why aren't, this isn't a secret. Why don't we all know this? You know, why isn't this openly taught as much as everything else, you know, to have the control if, if something does happen or something bad happens and we get stuck in this we should all know that we have the ability to change it might need some help you know um for i did it myself you know or, or through a therapist but once you know how to do it it's it's so quick and and i hate to say the word easy but it is easy yeah so now do you teach other people how to do this or do you just work with clients Right now I'm just working with clients, but part of my session and what I offer is that I teach you how to do it yourself in case, because a lot of times, and you mentioned you had, had CPTSD or complex post-traumatic stress, which generally just means that it's more than one, and it, which makes it a complex, you know, um, they, call it, they call it regular PTSD, right. or <laughs> the simple PTSD, and I always thought that was funny when they call not it that, that Not that it's simple at all. <laughs> Mean that, it, that you only had experienced yeah. one and so I had a, one incident so I would have just simple regular PTSD where if you've had multiple um, then it's complex and what's interesting about complex is if you can get to not the first of the the traumas in your life but the worst of them and if you can get that one and and get rid of that one the rest of them tend to collapse like a house of cards it's just, it's very interesting the way that that works. Yeah, it is. It is very fascinating to me. Right. Um, yeah, but your question was, I'm sorry, I lost track. There. That's all right. <laughs> uh, being able to teach it. So I do offer that when I, I have a session with my clients, we clear their PTSD, and then I teach them how to do it themselves in case, you know, sometimes the subconscious might, there might be something in there deeper that didn't show itself or they don't even remember that comes up later. And they're, they find that they're having some something an issue around something else that might have emerged because it, the, the rest of them were cleared and um, they can do it to themselves. So, and, or teach other people or, or just, again, it's that knowledge. Once you know, you know, you know? Yes, I know. I, I love that. And it comes up so often on this podcast is, you know, once you know, you know, there's no unknowing it. And it's just that, Oh, kind of moment, right? And you know what's interesting? You can't unknow anything. Think about it. Once you right. know something, you can't unknow it. Right. You know it forever. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. All right. So anything else that you wanted to touch upon? Um, no, I think I'm good. I just, unless you have any other questions, I just, I, I really, my message is, Terry, that there is help for people with PTSD or, and What's interesting also is there's a lot of women in particular. I work with a lot of women, and I, I about a year ago, I did an interview um, with 50 women around the world, and it was called 50 Women Over 50, and it was the premise was to, what do you know now that you would either tell your younger self or uh, your young daughter or something like that, you know, what, did, what have you learned? And talking to these women and interviewing them, it was so interesting because 75% of them had been either sexually molested or there was some type of sexual trauma in their, in their life. And for some reason, it was very odd to me that the six years old was a very common age that these, and, and the pro, the, the whole problem was that nobody, these women never realized that they have been living with post-traumatic stress right. because again, they don't associate, you know, we associate the combat veterans with, PTSD and things like that. And so they don't even associate the fact that they have it or 
had been, not all of them, but a lot of them are, have been living with this post-traumatic stress and they can get rid of it. Because these are women that are over 50 years old, but they've had consistently bad relationships and they didn't know why and all this type of thing, where it all stems back from this early childhood sexual abuse. And especially women over 50, it was a different age back then. You're probably not as old as me, but it, you know, it was, it was a totally different age. And there were a lot of bad things, you know, there were the creepy uncles and the, the, you know, the, the horrible stepfathers and all that type of thing that a lot of women endured. And it was interesting because again, this was a global thing. It didn't matter if I was talking to somebody in New Zealand or London or, you know, South Africa or, or Ohio, you know, it was the same story that I was hearing over and over. So getting the message out there that it, having been through a traumatic stress, um, and you're being in PTSD, you don't even know it. A lot of women in particular don't even realize that that's something that they can get rid of. Yeah. I mean, mine, mine involved, um, started at five years old and it was multiple predators and it was, I'm 54. And so it was in the seventies and it was, yeah. um, and into the early eighties and, yeah. And I think it still happens, but now it's that it, now it's the, we're talking about it more one, but two, there's, it's, it's more concentrated in the sex trafficking part of yeah. it, which is just yeah. horrific. Yeah. Um, and again, you know, that, that's a whole other podcast topic on right. what can be done to stop, to stop. Yes. This. Um, no, it, the thing is, it's, it's, was amazing to me and very interesting to me uh, that the stories were so similar and they came up over yeah. and over again, you know, with yeah. women over 50, it was pretty much the same story. And, right. um, well, but, I think it's beautiful that you offer this opportunity for, for women, well, men and women, but to, to my focus is women generally. Yeah. yeah. I saw that on your, on your video, on your website, on your, I watched your video and yes, I mean, to be able to offer that, Oh my gosh, that peace that comes with, which really is a tranquility that comes with being able to not, like you said, let go of the memory because it will always be there, but let go of the emotional tie and that impact that the trauma has, you know, on our mind, body, soul. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Beautiful. All right. So how do people get in touch with you? Where do they find you? Yeah, real simple. Um, it's Karen, coachkarenhill.com and Karen spelled with an I. The CoachKarenHill.com. You can I do free um, forty-five minute sessions, phone calls, and because that's how I start all my sessions with clients is that we have just a conversation like we're having now, just to make sure that we're a good fit together. There's no charge for it, you know. And then if if I can help you and you want to go farther, then we, we go into that. But um, so on the CoachKarenHill.com, Karen with an I is where you can find me. Wonderful. All right. Well, Thank you. again, it's beautiful. And I, I love this idea of, um, yeah. So, well, and I'm going to go just one more. So how many sessions does it normally take for people? Does it just depend on their trauma history? Yeah. Usually it's one to three because okay. again, if we can get us, even with the, the complex, and it's interesting that a lot of people do have more than one trauma in their life when they have PTSD. And if we can get to the worst of them or what, what is perceived as the worst, you know, it might not have actually been the worst, but whatever is that keeps playing in the mind and is the worst. If we can get with that one and start with that one, again, like I was saying, the rest of them tend to just collapse like dominoes or house of cards, that type of thing, but not always. And something else might come up. And so we, we follow up and make sure everything is cleared and it's all good. And then, um, Usually one to three. I generally don't have more than, or need to have more than three, but I certainly will. But that's, again, by teaching you how to do it yourself, you know, and right. how to clear yourself if it comes up. But generally one to three sessions and that's one being amazing. more prevalent. Yeah. Yeah. I did 98 sessions of EMDR. <laughs> I know. I know. That's crazy. Yeah. But you learn so much, you know, and it's, yeah. Yeah, it's all good. Very cool. Well, again, I just think it's, it's wonderful that you're offering this to others because anything that I say that just helps shine the light of hope into people's lives yeah. and um, know that, no, you're not broken forever. Yeah. You're not broken. Yeah. 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 Very cool. All right. Well, thank you again so much for joining me today on the podcast and sharing your beautiful insights. 
Well, thank you for having me, Terry. It's a pleasure to meet you. Yes, you too. All right, everyone, thanks for joining us today. And remember, until next time, be gentle with yourself. All right, bye-bye. Thank you so much for listening today to the Healing Place podcast with your host and trauma warrior, Terry Welbrock. If you enjoyed this episode and want to learn more about Terry, her mission, and the Hope for Healing journey, visit Terry's website at www.terrywellbrock.com. Thank you for liking, commenting, sharing, and offering your reviews on our YouTube channel, audio outlets, and Facebook page. And as Terry reminds us, until next time, remember, be gentle with yourself. Thank you.